Hello, my Twitter friends. If you're watching this, it means I finally figured out how to use this uh, OBS project. Um, it's a new system platform to me, so I'm not entirely sure or comfortable or confident in how to use it, so bear with me. Um, I don't know how to edit it or pause it or anything, so if I mess up, I mess up. Um, I hope you all are having a great Labor Day weekend. Um, some of you know I already recorded 45 minutes and thought I was ready to go, and turns out I was on the wrong screen the whole time. I was trying to get a little too fancy and share three different screens. So I'm gonna stick to one screen. I'm gonna try and get to all the questions that everybody asked. Um, a lot of people were asking about how I scan for setups um, and kind of like what my process is. But that, I actually already recorded a video. Um, Trendspider is gonna put it out on the 13th, so in about a week. So I'm just gonna skip that part and get to the other stuff. Um, I'm not really here to teach the strat or tell anybody how to trade. I'm just simply showing you um, how I trade, what I look for, why I take trades, when I take trades, how I set my stops, um, stuff like that. Might be looking over here because uh, that's where my notes are. Um, the first thing I kind of wanted to talk about was um, platform personality. And what I mean by that is finding a platform that suits you, suits your style, suits your needs. Um, I started trading two years ago and, well, full time. And for the first six months, I was on Fidelity Active Trader Pro. And honestly, it just didn't suit me. I found it very hard to use. I was not quick. Um, I had to pull up a whole bunch of windows just to place a trade. Um, so I ended up moving to Thinkorswim. And ever since then, I've just, I've been in love with Thinkorswim. It suits me. I like the way it looks. I like the way it operates. I can get in and out of a trade in a second. Um, so I think being comfortable and finding a platform that works good for you is a big deal and it's not something that's usually talked about either. Um, and I apologize, this video is probably gonna be a little out of whack, but uh, I'm just kinda read off my notes. As most of you know, this is my first time doing anything like this. Public speaking is a big fear of mine. I don't like to do it. I know I'm just sitting at home by myself, but still it's scary. <laughs> but we only live once, so I figured why not just face my fears and help you guys out. Um, You've all been amazing and very supportive, and I'm so thankful for everyone. So I hope this helps. I hope you get some benefit from it. Um, of course, if you have any questions, feel free to um, ask questions in the thread. I will answer them. So I guess I'm just going to kind of get started, see what happens. We're going to shrink my face down and also probably move it. So this is my Thinkorswim platform. I actually trade on my laptop. So this is my laptop screen. And then on another screen, I have eight time frames set up, which I did want to show you guys, but that's how it got a little bit too fancy for me and I couldn't figure out how to switch between screens. Um, but just to let you know, on my other monitor, I have the monthly, the weekly, the daily, the hourly, the 30, the 15, the five, and the two minute. So I'm, <clears throat> I'm always watching all the time frames, which 
is very important in multiple time frame analysis, multi time frame analysis, whatever you want to call it. Um, and somebody had asked, how do I narrow down my universe and the setups and the tickers and what I trade? And I think that's a really good question because there are so many tickers out there, so many sectors. Um, I personally have a watch list of about 60 tickers that I only watch, I only trade, I only track. Um, and the reason for that is I, I think it's important to know the tickers that you trade, be comfortable with them. Um, tickers that are very liquid, that have a tight spread, I will not trade spreads that are like two and three dollars apart. And I was just talking to somebody about Tesla and how I was happy that they did the stock split because at the end there, you couldn't trade Tesla. Even the options had a $3 spread and I'm just not comfortable doing that. I mean, if I buy one option contract, I'm, I could instantly be down $300 and I'm not cool with that at all. So that's why I only watch the names that I watch and that's kind of how I narrow down my universe and what I play and pick and watch. Um, let's see. So let me just kind of walk you through like what I have on my platform. <clears throat> so no matter, let's see, no matter what ticker I'm trading, so say I'm trading Apple, which is obviously in the tech sector, I'm always watching what the broader markets are doing. So I always have a little window open so I can see what the market is doing. Because like 90% of the time, whatever stock you're trading is gonna be correlated to the market. Um, here's kind of my go-to watch list. There's like 40 to 60 names on there. Um, if I take any overnight trades, those are here. Gappers go here. Um, but the really, really cool part and my favorite part of Thinkorswim is this active trader window. Um, it allows you to preset share quantities. So you can put whatever you want here. So I have 100 shares, 300, 500, 1K, 2K. Um, and that allows me to just quickly click it and you can just click your shares and click buy market. But my, my real favorite thing is this template. So you can create OCO orders, which are bracket orders. So if you have like a stop buy, let me get into like the hourly chart. So here's the hourly. So say I wanted to buy 100 shares of Apple and I instantly wanted my stop loss and take profit to be triggered also. Um, since Apple is a more expensive stock, I would use my overnight stop and take profit. So my stop is a dollar, my take profit is four dollars. So let's say I wanted to buy at the top of this candle, which is roughly 119. I'm just going to show you what happens because people ask me how I trade so fast and literally this is all I do. I click where I want to buy and you'll see so I said I wanted to buy at the top of this candle so my order goes in my stop goes in and what's really nice is I can drag this down. So technically, if my entry was here, this would be my target. So I would go long here, and I would hope that we reach here, which in this case, you can see it did. We got a 2-2-2 two, two, two reversal. Um, and, th and that's all I would do. So it's nice and easy, very simple, very fast. Um, as the price moves up, 
You can also walk your step up. Um, me personally, I like to get to break even as soon as possible. So <clears throat> let's go to the five minute time frame. Okay, so here was the level that I wanted to buy at. So if the price broke above 119, I wanted to be long based on the hourly chart. But the good thing about multiple time frame analysis is you can zoom down to smaller time frames and try to find an entry before you technically want to get triggered in. So if you look here, we had an engulfing bar on the five minute. So we call that a three, that's an outside bar. Then we had an inside bar. If you know anything about me and my strategy, I am all about inside bars. Um, it's a consolidation period. Um, buyers and sellers kind of don't know what's going on yet. They're trying to figure it out. You never want to play inside an inside bar. You'll just get chopped up on any time frame, whether it's the daily, the hourly, the 15. You want to wait for the break. So me knowing that I want to be long at 119, I would actually enter at the top of this candle, which is 118.76. So you see, so now I can move my stop by down to 118.76. Um, Rob teaches one cent stops, but they tend to always come right back in on you. So I just put my stop at the low of my inside bar candle. Now I know that was still my target, which is this, the high here on the hourly. So that's all I would do. I would enter here, put my stop here, wait for the price to move up. Once this candle came down, and um, someone also asked, when Rob says, try they out or triangle they out, what does that mean? All that means is corrective activity. And all that means in non strata talk is like a bull flag or a bear flag. Just wait for corrective activity, a little bit of healthy consolidation before you enter. So once, let's just say, once I saw this candle form, I see there's a lower wick. I would then move, so this wouldn't be here anymore because say I got triggered in. So then I would move my stop to the low of that candle because I know now I'm at break even. It did take five, 10, 15, 20 minutes, but now I'm at break even and that's still my profit or my target. And even then, even though that's my target and something I'm working on is <clears throat> letting trades play out a little bit longer. So instead of just getting out here, maybe I could trail my stop to the low of every candle and just keep walking it up, walking it up, walking it up until the next candle breaks the previous candles low. So that's um, how I found a good way to manage risk, to never be in the red, um, and psychologically, when you enter a trade and you're immediately in the red, it's a horrible feeling. Um, nobody wants that. So we try to put ourselves in winning positions instantly. Um, and it just helps psychologically. It's, it's much better. I hate, I hate red. I don't like, I, I won't, I won't tolerate it for very long at all. Uh, I feel like I'm rambling. Let's see what other questions I have. Um, so someone asked about OCO orders and I just went over that. Um, so if you're not sure how to place an OCO order on your platform, you might wanna Google it or YouTube it. Um, YouTube is such 
an underrated thing. Um, so many people have so many questions. They don't know how to do things. And I'm telling you, YouTube is my savior. I, I teach myself everything on YouTube. So don't be afraid. I mean, we don't know everything, but somebody out there knows something and they're willing to share it with us and it's for free. So um, use your resources. We're so blessed to live in this time where we have information constantly at our fingertips. You know, my daughter doesn't understand how lucky she is, but we know how lucky we are. So we use it to our advantage. Um, okay, somebody also asked, like on the, I guess they saw one of my hourly time frames and they asked me why I don't have extended hours on. Um, as you can see, extended hours is on, on this monitor. So on my other monitor, the one with the eight different time frames, I do not have extended hours trading on. So I get to see both pictures. And if you don't know, having extended hours turned on or off, it the charts paint a completely different picture. So I like to look at both because you get different signals, um, which is kind of an extra edge, you know. So it's, it's kind of just preference, but if you want to use extended hours on or off, but like I said, I use both because I think it gives me more of an edge. Um, somebody asked to show a swing trade example with a broadening formation. Um, so let's go to <clears throat> the daily time frame. And the best example I have, which I called out, I guess, August 10th or 11th, when I was in Chicago visiting Rob, it would be crowd. So let's zoom in a little bit. So what is a broadening formation? Well, it looks like this. It looks like a megaphone. And all it is, is a higher high compared to the previous high, and then a lower low compared to the previous low. So price is broadening. Um, and people always want to say, so people look at this level right here as support. They'll say that's the daily higher low, that's our support at 97.06, that was the low of this candle. So if you had your stop here, look what happened. You got stopped out. We did hit a low of 93, but look, the day closed green and we were back above this level. So you would have been stopped out if you don't know about broadening formations. So um, my call on this, I saw this daily inside bar forming. Let me zoom in. I saw this daily inside bar forming and I, I, I called out, I would be long over 141 and my stop would go under the low of the inside day. Because with an inside day, like I said, they're indecision days, it's a pause, the buyers and sellers are taking a break they're going to figure out which way we're going. Are we going back down? Are we going up? So when the inside bar breaks, your stop goes here. Now, what's your target? Your minimum target on this, <clears throat> excuse me, on this trade would be a new high. So because we know broadening formations exist, we want a high and then a higher high. So if you see what happened, we did get a higher high. So technically, that would have completed the broadening formation. It doesn't have to always touch the top line. The goal is to stop out the tight stop guys and stop out the shorts who have stops right here. And that's exactly what happened. But then you could have trailed your stop so let's just say when you got to 116, you're like, cool, I'm long. 
So once we got to 116, I would have put my stop at the low of this outside bar. This is, I feel like it might be hard for you guys to see. There we go. So once it got here, I would say, okay, well, I, I already hit my target. Let's see if it keeps going. So we got a, a three, two, a two, a two down, but we didn't get any follow through. So then raise your stop to here. Let's zoom back out. And then, I mean, just keep walking up your stop every day. Put it here, 117, 120. Oh my God, 130, look at the madness. Now, on this big gap up day, it's probably a good day to take profit. You know why? Because we were at all time highs, we were at exhaustion risk. Your trade played out. Don't get greedy. Don't hold forever. Um, so here, here's an example, I mean, of a broadening formation swing. Um, Zoom. Zoom daily was another real nice one. I had drawn this one as well. Let's pretend that other price action didn't exist yet. So I drew my broadening formation like this, and how I, it, how I do it, it's easy. You just find a high and then a higher high. Just connect those two points and then extend your line. So here, we're gonna use a low and a lower low, and then extend my line. And if you look, we have pretty much the same setup as Crowd did, right? We have a low, then we have an inside day. Inside days are the jam. That's where you want to go long, okay? So we're going to be long over 239 with a stop below 230. The goal is to make a higher high compared to, what's this level? 275. Oops, sorry. I love my horizontal lines. Ugh. Okay, so that would have been the trade. I probably would have exited here because I'm kind of struggle at holding. But then look what happened. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so that's just another example. Um, let's see. Okay. I wanted to talk about the spy short that I took on Friday and why I took it. Um, I kind of talked a little bit about it on Twitter but I'll go over the reasoning here. So I'm going to take you guys to the weekly time frame of SPY. Oh, sorry. Let's remove all this stuff. Also, if you've been following me, you know I've had a broadening formation drawn on the monthly time frame monthly, weekly, daily, whatever. It's it's all the same thing. A low, a higher high, a lower low, a higher high. So we knew to be cautious around this level. Okay, let's see. So SPY opened here around 350. It went up, so it was green. Then it turned red. So I was thinking, hey, Maybe we're going to make an outside week. And to do that, we would need to break the low of the previous week's candle at 339.45. That was my thinking, right? Um, so I always mark my levels. Like, what are important levels? So that was definitely an important level to me on Friday. So let's go to the daily now. So the daily... Okay, so this was Thursday, this was Friday. So I knew, let's see, if we broke Thursday's low, that we would probably go down and make an outside week, right? So that's what I was thinking. Now when SPY opened, we were inside. So we could have remained an inside day. I didn't know at the time, but I knew if we were gonna go 
if we were going to not stay inside, we had to break Friday's low. So that was what I was waiting for. Okay. So let's go down to a smaller time frame. Let's turn off extended hours just for ease. So to do that in Thinkorswim, maybe I should tell you how to do it in case you don't know. You go to settings, click on equities, and then right here it says show extended hours trading session. Just click that to make it go off, hit apply, and then OK. OK, so what do we have here again? What are these lines? This line is Thursday's low. This line is um, what it would take to make an outside week, okay? So I don't typically trade off the hourly. I typically trade off the five minute time frame um, because it's got to start somewhere. So I prefer the smaller time frames. So let's look here. Okay, so what happened? So we open Friday, we make a new high, the second five minute candle of the day, but then we start to tank, right? So I waited for what Rob says, triangle they out, corrective activity. So this would, he would kill me if he heard me say a bear flag, but that's what this is. It's corrective activity. So my plan, my hope was that we would break Thursday's low. And if we were going to do it, it was going to be right here. And as you can see, it was. So I actually entered a little bit early. I actually entered when this candle was still green towards the top. I pretty, I almost nailed the top, which doesn't ever happen and it doesn't need to happen. We don't need to catch tops and bottoms. The better entry, the safer entry to go short would have been the low of the inside bar and your stop would be the high of the inside bar. So You see that? So your entry would be once we break 343 and you have a, a 75 cent stop. That's nothing, right? Okay, so let's see. So we break the inside bar bearish. Boom, we break Thursday's low. Boom, we keep going. Ooh, we get, we get a green candle. Are we gonna hold the week? But look at this upper wick, no. Boom. <laughs> you guys like my sound effects? <laughs> Boom, there's the, uh, there's the outside week. And like I said, I struggle to hold on longer than my target. So here was my target. So I got out. What could I have done? Well, I could have trailed my stop to each candle's high. So then it would have been here, 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 here. So boom, instead of being out, at my target, which was 339.45. Let's just use this line. I would have actually stayed in to 337.52, which is a $2 move, which on cheapo option Friday is huge. So I bought, I don't even remember what I bought, the 350 puts at like 63 or 68 cents. I let him go here for like a dollar profit, but by the time they got down to here, they were over $5. So like I say, I'm not perfect. I'm not a perfect trader. I have areas of improvement just like you. So <clears throat> yeah, it, it could have been like a 10X, but I took too soon or I, could have held on to a couple runners or something because I was already in profit. We're playing with house money. So I hope that helps with how I use multiple time frame analysis. Um, let's see, what else, what else? 
Okay, so I, I told you guys how much I love inside bars. I also love daily rev strats. And what that is, is it's just a reversal pattern on a, on the daily time frame or any time frame. Um, but in this case, I called a long in Netflix. Actually, I called two longs in, in the same week, and they both played out just beautifully. So let's go to the daily. We're going to clear all these drawing sets. Okay. So, if you notice, we have a peak and another peak. So that's what? The top of a broadening formation. We're going to extend that out. We have a low. What else do we have? We have a lower low. Just barely, right? But most people got stopped out here. That sucks, because look, boom. So we're going to extend to the right, because broadening formations exist. We know this is true. So the first long I called was here. Look it. So my favorite setup also is a 3-1-2. Um, the entry is at the top of the inside bar. The target is, it's very simple. It's the top of the mother bar. So at a minimum, my entry was 492. My target was 500. My second target would have been 510, so the next high. But we got all of that. That went from 492 to 549. Huge, huge move. So that was the first one. We're going to delete these. The second long I called, this is a rev strat. So an inside bar, a two down, but two down, if anything is down, it should mean it's red, right? Well, it wasn't. It was green. So as soon as we broke 522, came down, when we started coming back through and we turned green, that could have easily turned into an outside bar at 539. So I called along for the following day at about I don't know where the price was when I did it, about 524 or 526 maybe. And the target was 549, 550. So basically the entry, the, the play here was an entry over this day's high, so 532 with a target of 549. And you see how beautifully that worked also. Um, so I guess my two favorite setups are a 3-1-2, this one, 3-1-2, and then a 1, a 2 in one direction, and a 2 in the other. Because what does this tell us? If you think about it in like layman terms, this we know that inside bars are consolidation. So there's an equilibrium happen, happening. People can't decide which way it's going to go. So it broke to the downside, but the bears didn't get any follow through, right? Because we're green. So what does that tell you? It tells you that the bulls, the buyers are stronger. So you should probably, you know, hop on their coattails and ride it with them. Uh, let's see. So somebody asked if I could teach a beginner any strategy, what would it be? Um, and that would be a 2-1-2 or a 3-1-2. Uh, let's see if we can find one. Okay, right here. You have a 2, a 1. So what's the entry? The entry is right here, 426. The target is the high of the mother bar, 434. That's it. It's, it's literally how easy it is. So if I wanted to, um, by common, I wonder how low this ladder goes. I've never scrolled this far back. 
probably a reason why. Ugh. 426.50. So let's let the platform, ooh. Let's let the platform do the work, right? We don't have to do anything. All we have to do is know what we're doing. We don't have to be there to actually target it. Ugh, okay, we're just gonna put something somewhere. Sorry, I know this is kind of crazy. All right, there's my stop by. There's my take profit. And that's it. So also the goal, when you break an inside bar to the upside, the goal is that it just blasts right away. So you shouldn't need a huge wiggle room stop. I mean, you could be a little looser and maybe put it like halfway through the body if you want. Um, on my overnights, I only want to risk a dollar a share. So if I took this trade and if I took a hundred shares, I would only risk one dollar. Well, maybe not on Netflix because it's more expensive, but typically on stocks under two hundred dollars, I will only risk a dollar because I don't want to lose money. I, I want my money. But anyway, this is the two one two. It's real simple, right? inside bar go long here that's your target boom done and like i said you don't have to do anything let the platform do the work for you set it forget it if you're hyper emotional and watch every tick you don't have to this takes all the emotion out of the trade which is such a blessing all right we're gonna cancel what else Sorry, just one sec. Well, I, I kind of think that that's all I have. Um, do you guys have any questions? If you do, please type them below. I'm going to upload this to YouTube and then Twitter. Um, again, I'm Sarah Sabatino. On Twitter, I'm Sarah Strat Sniper. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you're having a great Labor Day weekend and you're being safe and drinking responsibly, of course. All right. Well, that's it for me. Have a good day. Bye.